Okay, just 82 much. Yo, Mitch, have you ever spotted a Bigfoot up in a tree? Just wondering if that is likely or not. I would think that by climbing high up in the tree, they'd have a better vantage point. Uh, I've never seen a Bigfoot up in a tree. I don't think it's likely that the big ones, the, the adults, uh, would be able to tree climb all that effectively because of their sheer size and weight. Uh, basically, they'd be breaking the tree limbs off right at the trunk. Uh, unless the limbs are, you know, super heavy duty. I think possibly the teenagers and youngsters may be very capable of climbing trees. Uh, we have found what appears to be a perch about 30 feet up a pine tree. This perch was made by using two limbs coming off the trunk. They were kind of like a V-shaped extending out away from the tree. And on this V were trimmed branches laid across uh, to, perf to uh, create a platform. Uh, this would not be good for human hunters because the tree branches would obscure any shots. But it would make a great observation point to watch for encroaching danger without being seen. Do, do they climb trees? Well, possibly part of the f clan duties might be that uh, the... Younger Bigfoot uh, have to go climb up and sit in the tree and watch for danger for the family um, or for the clan. This is very possible. As Tex Sun says, wouldn't they use wood knocking to start driving prey towards their trap? Dropping from trees into onto their prey, pretty scary stuff if one was being hunted by them. Uh, yeah, you can get into some pretty spooky times. Um, when you're out there in the woods and and uh, you have to go through an area that you know would be a perfect ambush point. Uh, you know, it gets a little bit spooky. Deep and high ferns uh, would be, you know, they could be two, three feet away from you and all of a sudden pop up and gotcha. Or they could be laying on a log that's stretched across a ravine and you cross down below that and they just drop right down on top of you. Or many other uh, ways of doing it. Um, as far as tree knocking goes, uh, there's no data how they control the animals. Other than a few times they've been seen chasing a very large elk herd. Tree knocking or any sharp noise would certainly start the elk running. But I'm not sure if they want to do this if they're trying to set up an ambush. Uh, to me, they would probably want to fan out, create their U-shaped uh, herding force, and not try to panic the elk into a run. Uh, because the ambusher uh, would run more risk of injury trying to land on a uh, running elk. Uh, whereas if the elk was moving a bit slower, uh, you know, they could maybe hit their target of the front shoulders or the, the back and, and accomplish it real easy and quickly. So I don't think they really want to run the elk unless they're hurt in a hurry to move the elk from one place to another. So um, I don't think they'd be using tree knocking. However, a lot of times tree knocking may be used to get the attention of another one that's uh, maybe across a, a canyon or a ravine or something like that. Uh, you know, get their attention to look at them so that they can give them a signal or some other type of communication uh, saying, hey, I'm over here, you know, something like that. And I've never heard more than just a couple of knocks. It's always been uh, one or two knocks and then silence. However, <clears throat> rock clocking is an entirely different situation. We have recorded rock clocking uh, once that sounded almost like Morse code. Um, <clears throat> definitely had a, an intelligence knock behind it, uh, like it was sending some type of message. And it was very loud and clear. Let's see, the shadow people. Mitch, do you regret sticking your head into the nest to get that picture of Squeaker back in 2010? I know you paid a price for it, Add that even, and if you 
were alone, would you have done it? And do you think the consequences would have been differently by the mother? As we all know, she wasn't far away for sure. Uh, no, I don't regret um, going inside because um, I learned quite a bit from the situation. It was only the closed-minded and skeptical people that really paid the price. Yeah, I got slandered, degraded, and harassed, but the... But, you know, basically that comes with any Bigfoot researcher. You better develop a tough hide because you're going to get called all kinds of things. And people can get pretty darn nasty. So it's basically those people that paid the price because they lost a great chance to learn from an actual unique experience. From the only person in history that I know of who has crawled into a nest and come face to face with a baby Bigfoot. Uh, yeah, when I started getting smacked upside the head by all these people, I stopped talking and I stopped sharing for a while. <laughs> In fact, I still haven't told everything I know about the experience. Um, so basically when the attacks began, the information ceased to flow. I can see how and why some people out there that have experienced some unique things are reluctant to share their, what they've experienced. I do know that I do know more than I've actually shown or talked about and will I ever tell it all? Well, perhaps someday. When it happened, I, I was a nobody and no one would believe. Now I've, I have more credibility and uh, I'm being more accepted so perhaps someday I will share with the people that are ready to accept it.